welcome to the Why I Help podcast. My name is Joni Siegel. This is episode number four. But as I found with my earlier podcast, I kind of lose track of the numbers. So I don't know that I'll always number them for you. However, this podcast is all about good news. If you turn on the media, if you turn on the television or you read the newspapers or you look at some of the news websites, it's pretty much all bad news. And the people they focus on are doing bad things. But this podcast is all about the majority of the, the people who are doing good things in their everyday life to improve the lives of others. Now, today we're going to be talking to the CEO and founder of Ad Advanced Training Systems. His name is John Kearney, and he has spent over 30 years in the driver training field. He had previous experience as a certified public accountant, and he worked in other corporations, but he more recently is the CEO and founder of ATS. And over 100,000 students have benefited from the training within the scope of the companies that he has. Now, training people to drive trucks, that's a really great thing. That's definitely good news. But he's also involved with several different charities. And that's kind of what I want him to tell us about. Because it's all well and good to be super successful in your chosen field. But at some point, it's a really good thing if you can give back to people. And John is giving back to people in a big way. So let's talk to John Kearney. John Kearney. Is it Kearney or Kearney? Kearney. 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 John Kearney. Thank you for being on the podcast today. Glad to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. You're very welcome. So you, I read a little bit about your bio before we started, and um, I said that, um, you know, I talked about your company where you basically have training systems for training truck drivers. Um, but we're gonna, what we're going to be more interested in is a lot of the charity work that you're doing now and that you've done in the past. But what, because maybe some of our listeners want to know what motivates a successful businessman such as yourself to work with charities, what was your upbringing like? Did you, you know, work with um, charities and did you help people while you were growing up or was this something that came on later in life? Tell us about you. Yeah, I think uh, I'm part of a family uh, in the Tampa Bay area. I think I have around 600 relatives. Uh, it's the Mastery family, which was my mother and her family uh, who came from Lebanon. So uh, as I grew up, my father died when I was four mm -hmm. and we moved in here with my grandparents and her 10 children, including my mother. So I had an opportunity to grow up with my own uncles and, and uh, I, I saw them always involved in charitable concepts. They were always helping people. And I saw people as I grew uh, who had uh, problems, who had issues, who um, didn't have a home, didn't have the things they need to uh, lead a a fulfilled life. And it, it bothered me. It, uh, you know, why is that happening? What, what caused it to happen? And so I just got very, very involved in charities from a, a, a very young age. Uh, we had, uh, we built little parks for people. We did all kinds of things. Wow. So that was my motivation was seeing, seeing the issues that people have. Got it. John, would you say that helping and giving back, and this is uh, this is because I have no idea, would you say it's part of the Lebanese culture to do that? Yeah, the, the Lebanese culture is, is family oriented, but always helping other people. That's, you know, the way that they seem to grow up that way. I, it's hard to say what motivates a particular individual, but as a group, I think they're very motivated to help people. That's interesting. I didn't, I didn't know that, but, but that's what, what your story made me think of. So, so you grew up then with the mindset of wanting to help people and then tell us a little bit about your business background and how you arrived at where you are today. Well, I um, went to uh, the 
University of Florida and, uh, and then entered into the accounting profession and worked there for a long time, became a consultant. And so I started having the ability to travel in many places in the world and learn even more about the ups and downs of, of people. Um, so th that was the beginning of my career, business career. Then I moved into more having an interest in companies and then building them. Uh, and such as the current one is advanced training systems. Got it. So what were some of the things then that you saw when you traveled the world? Where did you travel to? I traveled all over the world. And uh, I'll give you an example in Mexico. Uh, I was working with a little group and they asked me to join their charity. And I went home with one of the people. Uh, his hut, we'll call it a hut, was a dirt floor dirt floor, uh, you know, four walls and one TV black and white with a cord that led to the next hut. And that was their happy existence. I mean, these people were happy in their existence, uh, but you get, you just want to help them. Yeah, I see uh, people exist in any kind of circumstance and yet they're able to be positive and they're able to, uh, to have what is happiness to them. But I think for many of them, they can't make it. There are many people who, uh, when we look at someone on the street, we, we wonder what happened, but the truth is that's not our job to undertake. Uh, we don't know whether they cause their own problem or whether they uh, are a victim, whether they lost their job, their home, their food, and now they are at the bottom. They're at the bottom of a well that they've got to climb out of, and we we have to help them, not government. Yep, that's a very, very good point. So, John, tell me, um, when, I, when I looked up the information about you, you're involved with four main charities that I saw, and if I'm missing one, you can always add that in. The first one is the Tampa Bay Research Institute. Tell us about that and, and how you got involved in that. Uh, many, many years ago, um, a college university in Japan helped start uh, a nonprofit here to do research, to research um, wellness, to research cancer, to research any number of areas. And um, I, I know that that type of development, patenting and getting uh, various licenses to operate, number one, it's very expensive. And number two, it takes years. It is not something that uh, gets funded easily and yet it has a massive benefit when successful. So, I became involved in that one initially through contributions. And then because I'm very interested in seeing success in the development of products that make people healthy. And we've been able to do that. We do have one product that is called Immune Extra and it's in many of the health food markets. And it's, it helps with your immune system and the balancing of your immune system so that you're healthier. That's interesting. I recently read a book by Dr. Furman, and he was saying it's way easier to prevent cancer than it is to treat it once it happens. And it sounds like that, that that's what your product does, which is brilliant. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. That's awesome. Among other things. Yep. Well, that's, that's great. I love that whole area. Um, my husband and I are all about you know, nutrition and, you know, alternative medicine and just ways to stay healthy because it's true. Once, once you're ill, it's harder to get out of it than it is to just prevent it in the first place. And then um, the other it one really I looked is. at was, yes, <laughs> the other uh, charity, uh, Florida Sports Hall of Fame. Tell us a little bit about that. I did go to the website and um, yeah, I did look at that, but tell us a little bit about it, how you became involved. Sure. 
Um, well, that's an interesting story. Uh, Florida Sports Hall of Fame is, a, you know, an old group of people that originally uh, was the, the sportscasters uh, were very, very involved. And uh, over years of time, that became less of the involvement. And uh, one of my friends, um, Gary Freud, called me up and he said, John, this, this group's in trouble and it has, uh, you know, a good purpose and, and can you come help? And uh, because I've done a lot of uh, consulting and helping others. So I got involved actually because they were broke and uh, a group of us got together and, and helped build it back. And it's an, a tremendous organization. It inducts uh, sports people who are successful into the Hall of Fame and then asks those people to, to work with young people, work with kids, uh, inspire them. You're a sports figure, you're, you're famous. And so our objective is to help kids be healthy and help them to lead a productive life. You learn a lot more from sports than the sport. You learn winning, you learn losing, you learn coming back, you learn all the pieces that are gonna happen throughout your life. So that's what the Hall of Fame tries to do. That's awesome. Yeah, because you need to learn to be a leader. Um, you need to learn what are you going to do if something tragic happens and you can't play that sport anymore. You know, there's so many different lessons <clears throat> that have to be learned. And just being a team member, it's amazing how many people you run into don't know how to be a member of a team, which means contributing right. to the whole team, not just being a star, you know? Anyway. Right. I, I like that. Now, are these, and the people who are inducted, those are professional sports figures, correct? Yes, yes. Although they may be a, a coach, a famous coach who has had a tremendous success. A lot of them have great things that will lead people. So it, you have to be in the sports world and have been very successful at it. Understood. And then they, they go around and speak like to kids or do they hold camps? Or does your organization hold camps? What are some, what's some of the do there? We, there are uh, other organizations that we're affiliated with that do hold all kinds of events for kids. And we're trying to be more and more involved in that. I love it. What are, other than being on the board and helping financially to bring the organization back to life, do, are you involved in the decisions on who gets chosen for the Hall of Fame or do you? Absolutely. Um, people can be nominated um, and then we have a committee that goes through that group of people and puts together an, a report. We then meet and go through them and all of the different qualities that, that people have. Uh, and then we vote on those people who will come into the Hall of Fame. And Got then it. we invite them and they, and they attend usually our annual session that we have for all of them, a gala. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. And these are all uh, sports figures who, if I remember correctly, they either spent a good deal of their sports career in Florida or they're originally from Florida. Right. Cool. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Now, you work with your wife in one of the charities that was mentioned, Angels Against Abuse. Tell us about that charity. My gosh, uh, my wife spends 24 hours a day uh, helping kids. <clears throat> and it started, it was interesting because she attended a, um, another charity and they had um, a place for kids that had been abandoned or abused or whatever. And I was behind her and, and she walks into this, let's call it a home uh, with tons of kids. And this little boy runs up to her and puts his arms around her and he says, take me home, I'll be good. So oh. Take me home, I'll be good. Oh, John. Oh. Well, that was it. That was it for Sandy. Um, that, that started 
a spark that hasn't ended. And what Sandy did, um, she gathered together some people um, and started Angels Against Abuse. And Angels Against Abuse has a center where they have supplies, emergency for kids. Uh, you have a lot of charities that have to have a board meeting and have to talk a long time before they make a decision. Uh, they're the emergency room so that the, the sheriff takes a kid out of a home and the kid may have a diaper. That may be right. all they have. No toothbrush, no jammies, no pillow, no right. nothing. I know I've, so, I've heard stories like that. Yeah. Yeah. So they put together a package for the kid to create some more happy feelings and also to make sure they have a toothbrush and a, um, a gown or, a, you know, something to wear so that they can exist. So they do that and they work with the court system so that when people have a visitation, they come to the center and they have an unbelievable atmosphere to have their session, a happy up, you know, good thing for people. Um, <clears throat> they also have a complete for emergencies. So let's say that you're gonna be able to get your child, but they have a car, but they don't have a seat. Mm. for the kid right no seat and that's that you need that in an hour or two hours well what what they do is solve those problems whether it's um, uh, uh, something to put in the car so you can drive whether it's some uh, a newborn baby that uh, has to have a certain type of uh, fluids um if you go in there, you're going to see diapers. You're going to see everything that someone who's um, in trouble in their life may not have. And there are a lot of those people. Yep. So they do that. They have uh, so many areas that they work in. You, you almost have to go to the website and go uh, over. And I did. And I, a couple of the things that I took away from it was there was, a, uh, quite, there was quite a few mentions of kids who, quote unquote, age out of the system because that's an area that is, I don't think is um, really confronted by many groups. And um, I noticed that, yeah, I noticed that there were several things that were provided such as like gift cards over the holidays so that they can have a good holiday and maybe even buy a gift for somebody else. So that's huge. And then I just, I noticed that even providing gas money to guardian ad litems to do what they do to help children that are in the system. You know, I can understand why Sandy has to spend 24 hours on this charity because <laughs> my guess is that there's more than 24 hours worth of work that needs to be done and requests that come in and situations that have to be handled. And um, that's amazing. Yeah, the things they do are wonderful. And they have a very active group of members somewhere around a hundred people who are active. Uh -huh. um, so they, you know, they have such a good purpose and oh, yeah. they do partner with other organizations uh, where somebody will need something like at one point, I think they had somebody who, who didn't have uh, proper teeth. It, it affected his personality yep. and there wasn't enough money to fix his teeth. So after a lot of research and seeing what we could do, uh, the funding came through the angels so that his teeth could be fixed. So that changed his life. I mean, we, you know, you, you can give money, but you also, there's a story. Can you help that person advance in their life? Can you help them have a better life? And in, in order to do that, there are holes in what it takes. And there's got to be somebody who can look at that and fill that hole and let them succeed. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And, and you know, we take, probably take our dental care, our dental, yeah, our dental care for granted. You know, I know I can yeah. get my teeth cleaned every three months and if something ha bad happens and I need a, a crown or whatever, I can just go get it done. Not everybody can do that. And 
yeah. Anyway, I, I totally get it. There's, there's the proverb, I think it is, it says, you know, you can give a man a fish, you can teach him how to fish. And that's kind of that, that viewpoint, like you fix someone's teeth and then they can go get work and then they're more confident and it changes their yeah. life rather than just give them a meal or give them some money to buy whatever, a computer game or what have you. That's, that's, a, that's just such a wonderful charity, John. We're going to probably hit you up afterwards to see if maybe Sandy wants to come on this podcast and talk more about Angels Against Abuse. Uh, but, you'd have a ball with her discussing I love that. It. Okay, well, she can consider herself invited through you, and we'll talk more about that. <laughs> Thanks. But, um, okay, so then the the last charity that I saw on there, and my guess is probably we're not even hitting all of them. I'm sure you're involved in way more than just these, is the KML Foundation. What's that all right. about? That uh, happens to be where I'm sitting right now, and I'm the uh, president and CEO of that organization, which was funded by a gentleman by the name of Elmer Krause. Is that him behind uh, you? Yes. Okay. That's a picture of Elmer Krause. And he, um, among other contributions, um, arranged for a this particular one, which is uh, KML Foundation, so that we have funding to pay for kids' education or training. Uh, when Elmer died, we started the process of that foundation among others that he funded. Um, so it's over 10 years old. Um, and what we do is kind of interesting. We interview every student that applies. Uh, it's Pinellas, Hillsborough, and Pasco County. We interview every single one of the students that apply. It is not based on having a 4.3 grade average. It's, it's based on, on that individual, what their needs are, what's their history, what, what do they need to make it through the training or the education that they aspire to. Um, so you, when we interview them, you begin to understand the lives of people. Um, We've interviewed people from various countries who are resident in one of the three counties. Um, so we get a story, every one of them has a story and you'll find out that they were abused, that they were uh, kicked out or that the family separated and all of a sudden the money wasn't there. Uh, you, you find all of those issues and then you find the one that gives you courage to think that the future is going to be bright because they come in and astound you with the way they're thinking. They're in high school, maybe just going to go start college. And uh, you hear the story and then you see the brightness in their eyes. You see the energy they have to make it. You see that they want to help other people. We just interviewed a young lady today and her, her perception of the feelings of others and how to help others. Um, she, she works in a hospital and she talked about the, the person who says, you know, well, she's sick, so she needs to take a pill. Where her answer would be to get to know that person a little, a little bit better and treat them as a human being and care about them. And so here's this young lady, she's, 18 and going to college so she's gone through the school system rapidly and and that gives you such a feeling that this world is going to make it there's there's enough of these people around that we're going to make it yeah and then you have others that need help just plain need help and we help uh, as a charity we help through every part of their education. In other words, there are charities that you, you know you only apply and you get it that one time. That's a tough one on kids because if they if they have to have money to go to school, you you, you get it one year and now you, you got to go get some more. In our case, we will track you completely through your educational process if it's a doctorate or whatever it is. We will fund through that if your needs remain. If your needs change, that's a different story. Right. Uh, 
but so we're funding them all the way through their education. Wow. And, and uh, getting to know them, some of them need words of encouragement. Some of them um, need you to tell them how great they are. Um, some Don't we them, all? I mean, we all need that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so it's, it's, a, it's an interesting story and you learn a great deal about some good people and some people in trouble. Um, we also have people who start out, everything's fine, everything's great. And then all of a sudden the car breaks down and they don't have enough money to, for that. So you got to help them and they can call us, which many of them, they write a check and goodbye and, and thankful that they even do that. But uh, it's a little different here. We're going to care about you the whole way. Yep. Yep. I think that's huge. Absolutely huge. So let's talk about, um, quickly before we go, how does someone contact the, um, I think the main ones I would, I would focus on would be Angels Against Abuse and the KML Foundation. Because I'm assuming that if someone wanted to, well, I know if someone needed help, they would contact um, Angels Against Abuse. But if some a young person wanted to apply for the KML scholarship, how, how do they do that? Give, give me the websites or the sequence of how they do that, the process. Yeah, they can actually, if they just go on their browser and put in KML Foundation, they'll see it and it'll come up and it's KMLFoundation.org. Okay. But and Angels Against just, Abuse? angelsagainstabuse.org so okay. they can find them quite easily and they can just put in uh, KML and they'll get it or they can put in Angels Against Abuse and they'll get it on their browser. Perfect. John, thank you so much. I, you, you've got to be a busy guy. You're CEO and founder of a company and you work on all these charities. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today and sharing your good news. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. I hope uh, it helps these charities to be more in the news more often. Absolutely. Thank you so much for listening today. I am hoping that I can do one of these interviews and not cry, but we are going to see if we can interview John Kearney's wife, Sandy. And I have a feeling that when she talks about Angels Against Abuse, I'm going to have my tissues ready. There's lots of good news out there, folks. We hope that you like listening to the good news that we present. And if you have a story, if you are out there helping the community and you would like to share your story of good news, reach out to us. We have a website. It's very simple. It's the whyihelp.com why I help.com. That's our why I help podcast. So we'll talk to you again with another good news interview. Mm -hmm.